century, Dundee changed from a small market town to Britain's jute and linen capital. So successful were its industries that the population of the city grew sixfold in 70 years. The jute mills and associated engineering industries of Blackness were one of the cornerstones upon which the prosperity of the city was built. However, in the 20th century, growing competition sent the Dundee textile industry into irreversible decline. By 1977, the industry, which once boasted a workforce of 40,000 people, employed only 7,000 and only 1,100 in Blackness. grand Victorian buildings in Blackness, once the proud monuments of a thriving industry, now lay empty and decaying and serve only as a reminder of the wealth of their Victorian owners. Facades adorned with highly decorative carvings and details to almost palatial standards still exist, belying the real condition of the buildings they decorate. They were strong focal points of interest and though many have and will disappear, the tradition will be carried on in the artworks to be included in the environmental improvements that are rejuvenating blackness. By the 1980s, the picture presented by blackness was one of serious physical and economic decline. Without major action being taken, the decline would become unstoppable. The task was therefore to eradicate the major problems and build upon the growth of small firms to create new prosperity. The Scottish Development Agency, along with Dundee District Council and Tayside Regional Council, set up Scotland's first industrial improvement centre. The poor appearance of the area was seen as a major drawback to business confidence and therefore a great deal of effort has gone into creating a better image for the area. It was realised that artwork as an integral part of the environmental improvement schemes should be included within the project and so two arts projects were set up within the Blackness area. One was headed by Liz Kemp, then Assistant Keeper of Art at Dundee Museum and Art Gallery, and John Gray, who was to be supervisor of the Blackness Environmental Arts team. This team of approximately 12 artists was employed directly by Dundee District Council on a Manpower Services Commission sponsored scheme. The second project was the public arts project itself. David Robertson, engineer with Dundee District Council, explains how the project began. In 1980, my department, that's the Chief Engineer's Department of the District Council, were commissioned to produce a series of environmental improvement and facelift projects for the Blackness Business Development Area. Uh, we've done a number of sort of works like this in the past, but right away we realised in Blackness that this was something different we had to, to contend with. Basically, the sites had to be treated in isolation. They, they, we, we had to, the designs had to all coalesce and had to relate to each other. And at the end of the day, people in Blackness had to realise that here was a defined, unified area. Uh, in, in other words, Blackness was more than just about demolishing a few buildings and planting a few trees to, in the spaces created. Uh, if I might use a much hackneyed phrase, we really were trying to create a series of sequential experiences so that anyone visiting Blackness would realise they were in an area where things were happening and in which confidence was growing again. Um, to achieve this, first of all, we, we used the highest quality materials to actually construct the, the sites in. But I think it was much more important. We, fe we felt there had to be a very high visual impact we had to almost get a, a 3D effect, a, a, a depth about the schemes. Uh, and, and through this we, we, we realised right away that the, the schemes had to be a focal point for the area so that people's eyes were sort of dragged away from some, some of the more unsightly factory buildings which were going to remain and they were concentrated on the environmental improvement project. Against this background, when Liz Kemp, who was then the Assistant Keeper of Art in Dundee District Council Art Galleries, she approached me with the idea of a public arts project in Blackness. And I think the potential was obvious right from the start, because obviously these works of public art would create focal points in the area, and that's really what we were looking for right from the, the start. 
course, the trouble was to get it off the ground. So the, the first thing we did was we commissioned a group of artists from Edinburgh called Artists Collective, who did a study of the area and identified a, a number of the sites where artwork could readily be incorporated. We then went to the Scottish Development Agency and the Scottish Arts Council with this report, and we managed to obtain joint funding from them relatively easily. It wasn't too hard a job to get money from them. But I think the point where the, the project was going to make or break was that, and, and we realised this right from the start again, was that the artists were going to have to get involved in the scheme right from the start. Um, it wasn't to be a case where the artist was going to be given sort of vague commission, produce something pretty, and then he was going to retire gracefully to his studio and come out again within six months with a, a work of art. <laughs> public art programme is a good example of the way in which attention can be drawn to the area for a very modest outlay. Funded by the Scottish Arts Council and the Scottish Development Agency to a total of £30,000 per annum, the programme has commissioned artists to implement schemes on buildings and sites in the area. Already three of these sites have attracted awards or commendation from the Saltire Society as well as much favourable comment in the media. What are the benefits of such a scheme to the Blackness Project and to the Scottish Development Agency as a whole? Blair Melville. I think the SDA have been very happy with the programme. It's made, I think, a very worthwhile contribution to the aims of the project in terms of improving the environment of the Blackness area. It's gained a lot of favourable uh, public comment uh, in the media and uh, most importantly, I think, the owners of the properties whose whose uh, buildings have, have had these artworks placed on. Public art has something of a history in, in new towns and, and similar settings, but uh, in Dundee I think this has broken new ground as far as the, the local authorities' willingness to become involved in such projects. I think from, from my point of view as, a, as one of a number of professionals working in, a, in an urban design context, I think the, the artist brings a, a slightly different perspective to the, the normal uh, operation of, the, of a design team. So it's been valuable in that sense, integrating another professional viewpoint. From a practical point of view, um, we, obviously the artist, uh, I think, has a personal involvement in, in the work. He feels a personal attachment to his particular work. He, um, and he's prepared to spend an, a lot of time ensuring that what goes on site is right for that site. And I think that's important. The two local authorities, Dundee District Council and Tayside Regional Council, are, together with the Scottish Development Agency, co-signatories to the Blackness Business Development Area. A joint approach was agreed which would bring the full range of powers and resources to bear on Blackness. How important has the role of the art programme been to the project as a whole? Councillor Frank Christie. I think it is very important for Dundee, uh, particularly with the the Dundee project and the investment in the BDA, that industrial development in itself can no longer be a criteria. That if it is to be a city to live in and for people to work in, it's also got to be a, ci a city uh, that is amenable to the eye. The programme is carefully organised and monitored at every stage by a management group of artists, engineers, planners and a coordinator. What is the role of the coordinator? Well, the coordinator acts as a link between the artist and the management group, the site owners and the public. Um, it's necessary in as much as, for instance, if you're dealing with a site owner, um, you, an artist and a site owner, they sometimes hit it off straight away, there's no problems and you leave them to it. But then um, you get different kinds of site owners. Some site owners have to be convinced for all the right reasons that something is going to work for them. So there's an awful lot of uh, negotiation and occasional troubleshooting that's involved uh, in that side of things. Um, as far as the public side is concerned, we're constantly um, being asked by newspapers and so on and the public itself about the scheme and I'm there to actually keep, keep people informed of the whole thing. The management group brings a wide range of expertise to the programme. How valuable is this in the implementation of the projects? Gary Fisher, Chairman. The whole 
basis of this program is, is making art for a broad public and uh, in order that we get it right, in order that the artworks are suitable, I think you have to have a broad committee, a committee which represents different factions, planners, engineers, artists, etc. Um, it's a committee, that committee actually is responsible for the commissioning. It, it has to answer any criticisms. It what are the benefits to blackness and Dundee? It's undoubtedly enhancing the image of Dundee, not only from an industrial, commercial point of view, but from a tourist point of view. Is the project in any way pioneering? Well, with the start of the public arts course at the College of Art, I think that gives Dundee, uh, it gives Dundee an extra focus as, a, as an experimental area for public art. And uh, make no mistake about it, public art is going to become more and more important because the government uh, and through the Arts Council are wanting more evidence for, uh, more evidence of uh, concrete results for, the, for their spending and public art is one way of doing that. Um, I think public art had a lot of raw edges in its early days in the 70s. A lot of it was rather mediocre and it didn't last very well but it's different now. I think we're proving it's different now. It is a particular kind of artist who is attracted to work in a public context. A working relationship has to evolve and develop between the artist and all other groups included in the complexities of urban design. How important do planners and architects view the necessity of a strong management structure? I think it's essential. Uh, one area where perhaps artists may, may exhibit a slight weakness is in, is in timetabling and financial control and uh, it's essential that uh, a, a well-structured management group does operate. To, to keep the thing within, within budget and within, within timetable. The project is continually updating its registered artists and recruiting new artists who wish to become involved in public art and learn how to tackle the complicated structure upon which public art is built. How do the artists feel about working within this system? I, I think it's fair enough. Um, I think it was a good discipline in a way because it did sort of raise questions which I wouldn't have considered otherwise actually working in a public context under the control of the management group. Um, I, I, I didn't feel that it restricted my freedom. Much of what public art is and where it's placed has in the past been left solely with the artist. How has this new approach affected your way of working? Well, to me, there wasn't an, an awful lot of difference. As I said earlier on, I, I didn't feel that working under the sort of blackness management committee really made an awful lot of difference. Um, it was obviously working on a far bigger scale and there were the problems of durability uh, which I had to consider um, which did make a slight difference. But um, the, actual, the actual space itself um, was treated in a similar way to a gallery space. With Ron Martin's work at Hunter Street, it was always recognised that there was a need to fill the space in front of the wall. A few years ago, this would have been done with a few trees, but now there is something that really focuses the eye on that corner. Public art is an artwork that is designed to suit a particular location, and therefore certain demands and constrictions present themselves even before a work is designed. Sculptor Jake Kempsell is working on a large work for Blackness. What are the particular problems involved? Well, the main difference is scale and sheer weight. When the, this is as big as I can actually cope with physically even with some modest assistance from a three-quarter ton forklift truck. In the studio, mostly I can manage things without that kind of physical help. But the realities of this are more to do with just the sheer size. And for example, speaking yesterday to contractors who might move it onto site, and discovering that a three-ton crane isn't adequate, given the reach onto the actual site, which is a grassy site. So, first of all, I've got to establish where they might go, ideally, measure distances back to the nearest roadway, and determine what kind of crane will do the work. 
possibly a very, very large one with a reach of over 60 feet. So these problems are ones you don't normally encounter. And they're quite interesting, actually. Now, I've had children about here while I've been working, asking me about these things. And generally, they've asked very sensible questions. One of which has been, do you mind if I run up and down? But uh, part of the whole complex of sculptures is to provoke public reaction of a sympathetic kind, hopefully, where it might inspire people to use their own imagination to develop their ideas about what the sculptures are about. I think it would be easiest for children to do that, and I've deliberately anticipated their participation. Whether I want it or not, I think they're going to use the sculptures, and frankly I don't mind that. Keith Donnelly, whose work on Belfield Street has won a Saltire Award. I was to, to collaborate with Kenny Monroe, another artist uh, working within the same street. I contacted uh, Bob Russell, who is the owner of Alexander Removals. I'd hoped to possibly develop a theme based on the present use of the building which Kenny had done and we would we'd spoken, spoken about that point and Kenny had uh, been able to do that with the Tay Valley coaches. So, I mean, I considered that and I considered the, the past use of the building which was the pattern shop for the uh, Blackness Iron Foundry. Developing from those points, uh, I chose to introduce elements that I was interested in myself, and that was the figure and make up a form and narrative which was more or less non-objective. Bob was a bit sceptical about the way I was handling it initially because, as he put it, he was interested in what he was getting out of it. Possibly some form of publicity similar to Tay Valley, mm -hmm. but, uh, I mean, he was very understanding uh, once he saw the designs. In the end, he was delighted by the work. Mm -hmm. I chose to work in with the uh, ceramics and uh, again so that the work would harmonise with the colour of the brick and uh, did a number of tests which again I showed Bob. Um, so he, he was involved from the start. What did Bob Russell, the site owner, think? I've been really quite delighted with the artwork. It's uh, created quite a lot of interest and uh, Subtly, subtle advertising actually, but it really has worked. How beneficial were discussions with the artist? Well, Keith Donnelly and I had a, quite a few meetings and uh, he put up two or three ideas. Eventually this is the one we settled on. Uh, for the blending in with the building and the colouring etc. Uh, we were quite involved with him and it, it seemed to have worked, you know, they've got quite a good blend. And besides the actual work itself, it blends in very well. And the public response? There's quite a lot of interest. You get people coming past here and every day you'll see someone stop. And not only that, they're available. They'll touch them. They'll look. And hundreds of uh, people... Has there been any negative response to the work? One of the fears I, that was voiced at the start from a, a, my partner, uh, he felt that they'd be vandalised. They've been up for 18 months. They have never been touched. I'm really surprised, really surprised they've never been vandalised. The Blackness Public Art Programme is endeavouring to do something that would be memorable. The works have to be serious, neither jokey nor too pretentious, but at the same time had to draw public attention. Enthusiastic response is continually growing. The media have shown considerable interest to the obvious benefits, not only to the Blackness Development Programme, but to the industrial and residential communities within the area. The public particularly those either working or living in the area, have responded very favourably to the programme. I think it's absolutely super, um, well, well admired. People have come up from all over the world, I may say, without exaggerating. Uh, I think probably on holiday living at the university, they've come up, cameras, it's really a tourist attraction. Very good, yeah. I'm very impressed by it as well, and it brightens up an area <coughs> in the Black Nest Road that could have been brightened and it's, it's nice to look at. What is, what's the reaction of uh, most of your visitors to the health centre? Oh, well, I think everyone admires it, yeah. and 
children they stop, also. They stop mm -hmm. and they go through, you know, you'll see the elder people uh -huh. yeah. going through all the, the different bits and trying to point out exactly uh -huh. what, uh, what and it, it is and what is it. And it industries, so, uh -huh. is important, mm -hmm. isn't mm -hmm. it, our mm -hmm. past industries. Mm -hmm. And we have yeah. a little added bonus about it that when the babies are on the scales bawling their heads off, we can say to them, um, <laughs> Look at the nice picture, quiet oh, yeah. they love it too. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yes. delighted to know that up till now that nobody has come to uh, yeah. daub on it, yeah. graffiti uh -huh. it or anything like that, so that's been great. I think we'd all be very angry if that was to happen. Many artworks within environmental improvement schemes have been carried out by the Blackness Environmental Arts Team, including major projects at Union Place and the Pole Park Flats. Works include, completed with the Blackness Public Art Programme, Keith Donnelly's ceramics at Alexander Removals on Belfield Street, Kenny Munro's tiles at Tay Valley Coaches on Belfield Street, Peter Flynn's fence on Lockie Road, Stan Boner's mosaic mural on Milne Street and Dog Mural and Shadow of Trees on Brown Street, Artists' Collective Mural, St Peter Street and mosaics on the Whitehall Theatre, Belfield Street, Ron Martin's sculpture on Hunter Street. Other works are still under construction and these include Lizanne Wood's sculpture at Burnside Mill, Keith Donnelly's ceramics at Watson and Phillip Blackness Road, Jake Kempsell's sculpture at the Lockie Roundabout, Mike DeHaan's tiles at Alexander Removals, Alistair Smart's sculpture at Pool Park, Alistair Ross's wall plaque on Baltic Works Peddy Street, and Stan Boner's revamped public convenience at the West Port. The larger Dundee project, now well underway, offers a great opportunity to expand on the experiences and successes of blackness. We would hope to involve all relevant organisations in discussions in the near future, with the aim of introducing an art programme of considerable scale into the ambitious new concept of rejuvenation now taking place. We have the expertise the artists, the confidence of the public and the local authorities, and with the start of the new course in public art at Duncan of Georgianston College of Art imminent, the climate for expanding the role of art within the community could not be better. New companies of worldwide reputation are now becoming attracted to the idea of setting up in Dundee, but the city needs to reflect an air of optimism and a healthy environment, an environment which is visually attractive as well as economically and industrially sound. Councillor Frank Christie. There is a, a partnership, undoubtedly a partnership now between the, the, the local uh, government in Dundee and government uh, through the SDA and through the Dundee project to create a new image for the city. And that image itself uh, cannot simply be created by a councillor's taking political decision, but people like yourselves. And